What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDG Big Dogs. Gotta eat. We're doing a little something different, different today. I, I, uh, I'm not actually around today. Whenever you're watching this, so Q and assault, which is when I get assaulted by y'all's questions, anything that you guys have personalized for your league, I will answer them. If you are a uh, Patreon member, patreon.com forward slash BDGE. Today, I want to talk about the top injuries that have occurred at camp or things, uh, you know, reports, rumors, whatever that we've heard about some guys that are less than hundred percent or uh, some injuries that have just occurred recently. And in case you're drafting at this point in the summer, you need to stay on top of these things. You need to be able to move with with the flow you need to be able to be adaptive you need to be able to pivot on a dime okay you need to be a ballerina at this point in the summer i will start this off by saying just general terminology general sense of things the season starts on september 12th also i'm recording this at 10 a.m friday august 6th you guys are going to be watching this i believe saturday i might release it today i don't know if something happens in the next 24 hours and i sound like an asshole i apologize okay i'm sorry i'm not a fucking alien i ain't no damn robot i'm not a crypto punk i'm human i'm just trying to give you all the best big facts you can find out there so we're gonna get into uh about 10 or so of the injuries that i think are notable that you guys should understand a little bit more now i'm only technically a doctor but we have a, real, a lot of really good doctors out there in the fantasy space i will link some of their twitters down below if you want to follow them so that people on youtube in the comment sections that are trying to tell me about when injuries are going to heal and shit uh, Y'all can go sit on it, and I can go sit on it, to be honest with you, because, again, I'm only technically a doctor, but I try to be the, the middleman. I try to be the medium for y'all. I try to take in as much content as I possibly can from people that know what the fuck they're talking about, who's not me, and uh, and disperse it out to y'all so we know what we're doing with these guys, okay? With that being yelled at at you, we're going to tuck our shirts in. We're going to stop yelling. We're going to eat. <laughs> All right, so this list, I apologize. I just started putting it together. It has no rhyme or reason. It's got no actual value to the actual order of the list, okay? They're just guys that are that, that I remembered off the top of my head. And again, I'm probably gonna miss out on some dudes, okay? But first one to know is Mr. Dak Prescott, obviously dealing with the shoulder injury. The uh, the fracture that he occurred, or that, that occurred to him last year, not a problem anymore. The shoulder injury, though, is a little bit of a problem. And uh, Roto Pat tweeted out something funny. It went from day to day to having to call the Texas Rangers about it. It's supposedly like a baseball injury, something under his arm, but it's like a it's like a lat pull. OK, it's like a muscle strain is what my understanding is. And anytime there's a muscle strain, uh, the, the re-injury risk is very, very high. OK, so think of, you know, muscle strain, same thing, hamstring strain or hamstring pull or whatever. Right. These are muscles. These are. Uh, they get pulled and they need to heal fully before you can go 100% on them again, right? And obviously, as a quarterback, you need this part of your body. You need the lats. You need to be able to move. You need to be able to pivot. You need to be able to throw with full force. Again, I bring up the point that the season starts September 12th. So that is one full month and one full of the week away, which is a lot of time. Most muscle strains can heal. Most minor muscle strains can heal within a week two weeks, three weeks, if they're if they're a little bit more major then we would know about that, we'd have more news per saying that this is a major injury and it's something we can be concerned about. And thus, you know, a five, six week timetable is probably more relevant. But right now, I'm not worried about Dak because uh, reports out of camp are that we shouldn't be too worried about it. And again, they have five weeks before week one starts. And Dak knows the system. He knows his playmakers. It's not like we're, we're obviously you're always going to miss some rapport if you get hurt in training camp or whatever. But I'm not too worried about Dak right now. Shouldn't be worried about his weapons either. We could talk about Amari Cooper while we're talking about the weapons. Now, I, uh, I've i done research on Amari Cooper and the whole foot offseason injury, and uh, he's recovering, and they're not going to have him practice until after the second preseason game, which is uh, 10 or 12 days from now or whatever. That concerns me a little bit. Like anytime you start getting injuries in August or anytime you're, anytime you're week to week at this point in the offseason, I'm worried. Uh, but the fact that we do have five weeks before things kick off, I'm okay. I just think it's really, really important to keep your eye on the reports that come out of camp. If there are any setbacks, if there are any hesitations to players and their limitations on the field, everything out of uh, Dallas's camp has been positive on Amari Cooper up to this point. And from what I have learned from my Twitter doctor friends, uh, they are not concerned about Amari Cooper. Uh, you guys might be concerned just because he has a long injury history. And uh, and that is that is completely understandable i'm a little bit concerned about amari cooper 
because he just has such a long injury history with his foot, with his ankle, with fucking everything. Every time a guy opens his eyes, gets out of bed, he injures his ankle, right? Trying to put on a slipper, guy slips. So with Cooper, the injury that he's currently dealing with, that he's rehabbing from, should be fully healed. He should be fine to go by the start of season, from what I understand and the research that I have done. So not too concerned with either of the Cowboys' offensive players. Tyreek Hill is dealing with some knee tendonitis, apparently. Uh, he might be limited throughout the season, but this is not something to be concerned about. Okay, It's, it's something that supposedly might flare up during the season for a few days or a week or something, and he might be limited at practice that week, but he can go a month, two months, weeks at a time without it actually doing anything to him, and it's not a serious, serious injury right now. So don't worry about Terry killing the knee tendonitis. Now, Saquon Barkley's been a crazy, crazy storyline all offseason, of course, coming back from the ACL tear, the ACL injury. It was also more than just an ACL, which pushed the rehab timetable back because he had to wait for other parts of his knee for the swelling to come down before they can actually operate on the ACL. And we know that this is a nine to 12 month recovery timetable for all of these players. You know what? Let's uh, let's let's just put everybody into the same everybody that dealt with ACL tears last year. We are going to talk about together. OK, and off the top of my head, the ones that matter for fantasy, Saquon, Cortland Sutton, Joe Burrow, Tyreek Cohen. And this is a this is an injury that we've been very, very prominent about being careful drafting guys one year removed from the ACL tear on this channel. OK, we like to draft them two years removed. This is it's not a perfect fucking science, but we literally have math and science behind the injury. But when it comes to fantasy football, way more often than not, way more often than not, probably like an 85 percent hit rate. You want to wait till that second year to be drafting a guy off the ACL tear. We we see it time and time again. And there are going to be guys, of course, that buck that trend, right? The Cooper Cups, fucking Adrian Petersons. Every once in a while, we do get guys like that. However, the reason that we want to fade those guys is not just because it's physically nine to 12 months after the ACL tear for you physically to be back, but the mental part of it, the mental part of it is a huge portion of it. Do these athletes feel like they are back in their body? Do these athletes feel like they are 100% and can trust their knee to make the cuts that they need or to you know, sidestep defenders or whatever? And the overall point I'm saying is this is something I've been saying to you guys for years, and we're hearing all the reports coming out about Cortland Sutton, about Joe Burrow, about Tyreek Cohen, that they're hesitant to move on these knees, right? Like Joe Burrow has not looked good. Joe Burrow has been hesitant on that. Uh, that ACL Cortland Sutton has not had his legs under him at camp these are the things that I echo to you guys that are super fucking important guys it's not just whatever a timetable is put on an injury you can't just go to best case scenario again this is a point that I made uh, on a podcast appearance that I did yesterday or two days ago whatever it was on the Roto Underworld radio with Michael Thomas they give us his timetable of you know originally it was six to eight weeks now it's like 12 to 16 weeks the problem with these guys in their timetables, especially for in-season injuries, is that, okay, even if they do return to play at the lower threshold, eight weeks in, what happens is they're such prominent names that you feel like as soon as they're active, you need to put them into your lineups. And a lot of the times they're eased back into the lineup, okay? So yes, you're missing a guy like Michael Thomas for seven weeks, but then you're also getting one, two, three weeks of Michael Thomas at 40%, 50%, 60% of the snaps. And at that point, what does that mean? That's a wide receiver three, a wide receiver four. So this is the point I try to get across to you guys. The lower limit on the timetables for injury returns are sneaky, 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 killing your fucking team, okay? This is so important. So you have guys like Corton Sutton who, we're, we're into August right now. We're into August. And if you're not mentally 100% yet, you're gonna have problems when you actually enter the regular season. So I'm really worried about Corton Sutton starting off really, really slow. This is making Jerry Judy move up my draft board. Saquon, there was a report that came out today that we should see him by week three, but they haven't ruled out week one yet. This is getting more and more dicey here. You know, I've said, I think they're under uh, reporting how healthy he is and they're going to over deliver in the regular season. But again, where there's smoke, there's fire. If they keep continuously putting out these reports about how he's coming later and later into the regular season, this is a cause for concern. At this point, I don't think Saquon can be uh, a realistic first round pick. I think he has to drop a little bit, right? He's going to, I think you start putting him behind guys like Aaron Jones, Austin Eckler. I don't like to take wide receivers in the first round, but how can you, how can you draft a guy like Saquon over a Devontae Adams or even like a Stefan Diggs? So it starts to get really, really dicey with Saquon. We don't know what they're going to do. Uh, you know, you never know. They could fucking end up putting him on the pup list. I don't think that's going to happen, and I think they're going to use him within the first month of the season. I wouldn't be surprised if he's active. 
but only plays 40% of the snaps week one, 50% week two, 65% week three. Like that's something that we could see. Joe Burrow, they're saying he's hesitant on his leg already. And this is something that I've echoed to you guys all offseason. They have a really bad offensive line. Uh, so he's going to need. Okay, I know you guys are going to be like, they have a very improved offensive line. Riley Reef is already hurt, and the other guys were not first-round picks that they used in the draft this year. So their offensive line, I've looked at tons of rankings. I did a lot of research, actually, this morning before I made this injury on offensive line ranks. And Cincinnati's still, like, number 25 in the 24 to 28 range in terms of, you know, how good their offensive line is. He's still going to take a lot of hits. He's going to need to be mobile, and if he's not 100% set under that knee— it's going to be problems for this offense again in Cincinnati and for Joe Burrow. Uh, so I'm worried about there. Tariq Cohen, uh, obviously this is a major concern for Tariq Cohen. He's he's feeling stiffness at this point in the offseason. That is a huge red flag for a guy like Tariq Cohen. So he is completely off your board. Uh, Burrow needs to be moved down a little bit off your board. Like the fact that he was getting drafted at quarterback nine, it was always insane to me. Um, I think you, you, you become a little bit more hesitant to take Jamar Chase at the end of the fourth round, T. Higgins in the early fifth round. Tyler Boyd's been like a ninth round pick, so I'm not really too worried about it. But uh, there are concerns there. Cortland Sutton drops. You you draft Jerry Judy over Cortland Sutton now, no questions asked. Uh, Saquon drops out of the first round. Uh, speaking of Saquon's team, we have Kenny G with a hamstring pull that's going to cause two to three weeks of missed time here. New team, you need that rapport with Daniel Jones as much as you can possibly get because it's fucking ugly out there. And I, I'm starting to get really, really bad vibes overall from this New York Giants team. We have guys missing time with injuries. We have their offensive line is still just, just absolutely miserable. So while I was in on Daniel Jones for a while, I'm starting to get a little bit more hesitant to pull the trigger on him now that Kenny G is missing time. So Kenny G drops for sure. If you're drafting right now, again, we do have five weeks for a full recovery from this, but you want to see in the summer, you want to see like a full week of, of practice. You want to see a guy, you know, he has a hamstring pull right now. He misses three weeks. You want to see at least a full week of practice leading up to the regular season to know that he's 100%. Again, don't find injuries because they will find you in fantasy football. Kenny G, big red flag there. Uh, we have a couple other guys with hamstring pulls or missing multiple we uh, multiple weeks. Marquise Brown, when they come out and they say this is a more serious injury than they had uh, initially realized, huge red flag. Marquise Brown is going to be off my board uh, altogether, okay? And that makes a guy like Rashad Bateman more enticing. He should step into the wide receiver one role like pretty fucking quickly. I don't give a fuck about Sammy Watkins over there. Uh, Rashad Bateman's about as crispy as they come when it comes to route running, and I think that's going to change his offense and change a lot for Lamar Jackson in the throwing game. So be concerned about Mar Marquise Brown to a heavy, heavy degree. Devonta Smith, two to three weeks with a sprained MCL. <clears throat> Not as worried about the injury overall. We've seen plenty of guys come back from sprained MCLs in season from the summer. Uh, the, the bigger concern here is that we need a guy like we need a rookie wide receiver at camp. Like this is really, really valuable time for the guy to get on the same page timing wise with this quarterback, um, learn the playbook, do all these kind of things, learn the different route trees that they have in the offense. So I'm more concerned about, about him missing camp than I am about him actually uh, missing any time or the injury being serious. MCLs are not that serious when it when it comes down to it. And he has plenty of time to recover from it. Like I said, five weeks is usually a two to three week return. Uh, for a guy like Devontae Smith. So I'm fine with him. If he keeps dropping, like if I see him dropping into the eighth, ninth round of best ball drafts, I will absolutely be pulling the trig on Devontae Smith. Uh, we already talked about Michael Thomas. He's pretty much off my draft board. Then we have the Colts, who uh, I believe we've talked about in like 75 different videos already. Uh, Quentin Nelson, Carson Wentz, both dealing with foot injuries. Uh, everything I've heard out of camp actually is kind of optimistic for them. And well, I always side with injury pessimism. I think injury optimism is the number one killer for fantasy players. I'm a little bit more pessimistic or optimistic that Quentin Nelson returns on the earlier side of the five to twelve week timetable. Same with Carson Wentz. So I wouldn't be surprised to see them both like on the field by like week two, week three, maybe. Um, so I'm a little bit more optimistic. I'm still not going out of my way to draft anyone on Indy. Like Jonathan Taylor is definitely not a first round pick. Probably borderline second round pick at this point. Um if he drops into like the mid to late third, I'm definitely fine pulling the trigger on Jonathan Taylor. Uh, other skill guys in that offense, I'm probably not drafting. Maybe I'll draft Michael Pittman if he drops into like the 14th, 15th round, but I'm not looking to grab Paris Campbell. I'm not looking to grab any of the tight ends or anything like that. So they're kind of off my board for now, but I'm a little bit more optimistic on Wentz and Nelson after doing my research today. Last couple guys, we have Julio and AJ Green supposedly not dealing with anything serious. Story of their fucking lives and their careers. So... They should be back on the field within, you know, a week, two weeks or whatever. And once they get a full week of practice in, I'm fine drafting either of those 
wiry veterans. Okay, uh, I believe that wraps up any of the serious injuries. If I missed anything, you could drop it in the comment section down below, and I will try to give you my take on whatever uh, research I found on them prior to it. But I just wanted to kind of go off the rip for you guys here, give you any injury serious updates that you need to know out of training camp. Some of these guys definitely have concerns. Some of these guys you should not be as concerned with. I would say the majority of the guys that we need to be concerned with are the ones who have the hamstring pulls and their coaches are coming out and saying that it's more serious than we had initially anticipated. And then the ACL fucking squad. We have a squadron of ACL guys coming back from it. Burrow, Cortland Sutton, Tariq Cohen, Saquon, all, all, all trending in what seems to be the wrong direction. So be very weary about those guys. The other thing to note with ACL tears too, and this was proven if you had an ACL tear, uh, a lot of guys tear their other ACL when returning from an ACL tear. And there's been studies done that if you tear an ACL within the first two years of returning from that ACL tear, your re ACL tear risk is 20, I think 22% higher than normal players that did not tear their ACL. Okay. So just noted that is another injury risk you are taking with guys returning from their ACL. If you enjoyed the video, hit the button that looks like this and then hit the button that says subscribe on it. So we put the D in it. It'll tell you that you're subscribed. You can hit the little bell underneath for notifications. Anytime I go live or I'm answering your questions, it'll let you know. Uh, and that's it. Love y'all. So I want to keep you up to date. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace. Ah! Ah! Hey!